Emily and Ryder, thank you so much for joining us um, to talk a little bit about Bitter Earth. But before we go into that, I just want to find out how you guys are and where you guys are. So Emily, why don't we start with you? Um, thanks for having me. Um, I'm in Miami now and I've just been, you know, trying to keep up on my technique and, and uh, working on things and, and teaching Zoom classes. And Ryder, how about you? I'm good, thank you. Also, of course, thank you very much for having me and having us. Um, I'm actually, since a couple of days, I, I'm in Berlin. I've just left um, the United States to, to come to Europe as, you know, unfortunately, we still have to wait to come back for real. So I'm taking class here, I'm teaching, and I'm trying to, to use the time to see friends and family. I'm about to leave to Vienna soon. I want to talk a little bit about the powder de that we did just this last season that you guys um, really were so beautiful in. And it was, um, if I remember correctly, a debut or premiere for both of you. But first of all, um, I know that you guys are friends, you're, you're close friends off the stage. And so talk a little bit about how that might or might not affect um, how you work together and how you perform together. Um, Rhino, let's start with you. Okay, yeah, um, it was a, it was a premiere for me, and actually, it was the first time dancing Christopher Wilden for me as well. Um, you know, a beautiful, beautiful pas de deux, and to a beautiful music, beautiful choreography, and then of course, um, as you casted Emily and me together, it's always like, yes, we are really close friends. I mean, Emily is my closest friend, definitely in Miami and um outside the the you know outside the company and like for my private life and all of that um so it's very special always to dance with a person you like also personally not necessarily that should be the reason because we're all professional enough to to dance with any partner you know you have to be as a dancer but of course it's special sometimes it's difficult because like we know each other so well that like if someone gets like frustrated or something, you you can maybe get a little bit more personal. But um, in general, I think it's 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 beautiful to share it um, as a partnership on stage and also as a partnership in a, in our private life. Emily, um, it kind of tying it a little bit to what Reiner just said. So um, bitter earth is a very emotional. Um, I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it feels to me that it's a very emotional, um, really deeply um, moving pas de deux, especially with the words of Dinah Washington. How 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 did that make you feel working with Reiner? You got you guys you guys are close, you're close friends, but um, there's also a little bit of this uh, love interest as well in the pas de deux. To work on an emotional pas de deux like that with someone like Reiner was. Uh, an incredible gift and a challenge, honestly, because because it's so emotional for myself. I've tried to kind of tone down the emotion because I wanted to get more in line with him. It's almost like the communication was like um, you could hear a pin drop, and that's a very different feeling for a lot of partners we've done together. So, so separating the the emotion and then um, from the technique. There also let's look at the technique a little bit because the partnering was um, certainly from my perspective. You, it was difficult. There's some there's some iffy moments where the a female ballerina takes off and the the, the male dancer has to grab one hand and kind of hold her. Um, Reiner, where you're in a very kind of uncomfortable position, bending your knees, and she's you've got to put her around your back and she's rolling. Um, so the these are movements that are not necessarily. Um, movements that we're used to, right? And even the Balanchine or the Robbins choreography or the Paul Taylor or the uh, maybe Twyla a little bit, but talk a little bit of how did you struggle with these movements? Was the choreography and the partnering different, um, difficult? Uh, was that something that you guys took off, you know, outside the studio and discussed? Emily, why don't we go with you? Uh, we did. It, there were some difficult parts yes and we did end up um i remember sending him sections of videos of wendy whalen and tyler um and saying you know what this in this video where they do it here they go like that and then when they do it in this location they kind of do this so maybe we can try some of those and we did have a lot of that back and forth because um different people different 
different uh, body weights, different heights. I think um, it kind of changes everything. And I know that, that Christopher Wheel wanted a certain image and I don't think he minded so much exactly how you got there as long as you gave him the, the image and the feeling he was looking after. Ryan, what about you? Because as a male partner, I mean, you're such an extraordinary partner, classical partner. Um, what was this experience like? You know, it is, I find it's always difficult. And actually, as, as you know, because we rehearsed with you a lot um, when Christopher wasn't here anymore. And I remember you, we would always run it twice. And always the second time was like almost better than the first time. Just because it's very hard, you know, usually when you dance, you have a little intro, you start, and then comes the highlight, let's say the part of the, the variation, then comes a little, you know, closing. But here, basically, it's like the curtain opens, and as a dancer, you're so excited, and you're so like, you have to shoot so up, where, and that was actually the difficulty, because you had to be so quiet, and that's why actually, in the rehearsals, I remember clearly that always the second run, when we were kind of already tired because we were more grounded, was sometimes better than, um, you know, the first time, which of course in the performance isn't possible. So I tried to be like a bit tired. So I would run around and I would like before to, to, to be a little bit more, you know, calm for the actual pas de deux because it's, it's very hard to start from zero to 100 and become. The partnering is it's very, very tricky. You're very naked, you're very exposed. The most, the, the little mistake you see, there is no covering, there is no tutu, there is no skirt where you can so somehow in balance sheet, you can always make an off balance if you're off and it would be fine. In this, it's not fine. So it almost seems like in the bitter earth are these subtle movements that, that are really very, very difficult right, that you have to hide how difficult they are, be, um, but also they're incredibly expressive if you if you get it right. Um, it brings me to Christopher. So I think, was this the first time that both of you had worked with him? Um, and and what were your, what, what is your, what were your thoughts? What were your, what was going through your head? What was it like? What was different about Christopher or similar about Christopher? Uh, Reiner, let's start with you. Okay. Um, yes, as I said, it was the first time I've ever done a Christopher Wilden ballet. Of course, you know, the name I know already from Europe, from the Royal Ballet and all of that. Never got a chance to, to work with him or dance anything from him. It was very special. It was a little bit of pity that he came on a very early stage where we were still learning the choreography. So I wish I would have had already the choreography more learned and in my body so I could have been more working on it rather than learning and at the same time working but then again you know we all know as a professional dancer you can you can't always have everything with the schedule and the performances still it was amazing he's a very calm person i think he works very individually i remember also how he worked with the other casts and the other couples he would not be like everyone the same he was like oh that works for you that's fine you know very individual and that's what i really liked um on working with him and Emily, what were your thoughts regarding Chris? Uh, well, he's lovely. I loved working with him. I actually did his Midsummer Night's Dream in Colorado Ballet. Um, mm -hmm. And then I did his Polyphonia a couple of times. So we did work with him a couple of times in the studio. He had a great way of encouraging us, finding a way, even just one step, that would work for us individually. I remember one, it was a little Devlape lean off. And it was some, there was something about the way he explained for me to do it physically that it clicked. I was like, oh, and that was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> the bitter earth is a, the, the lyrics are incredibly powerful. And so my question is a couple of questions. Um, first, you know, what were your emotions when you very first heard um, Dinah Washington's uh, music to this and the lyrics uh, to this? And while you were dancing, did you, or even before, did you listen to them and did that influence the interpretation or did you choose just to go with the choreography? Emily. I love that juxtaposition of, of the music with the singing. Um, and it does bring every time, the amount of times that we have heard that piece, it doesn't matter. Every time the music turns on, you get into the zone. That first note is, um, it just it gets you into the zone, and then um, and then her voice comes in, and I remember even the feeling of like 
breathing with her first um, word. Individually for each of you, what is Bitter Earth about? And uh, Reiner, let's start with you. So if you, if you had to add a story to without listening to the lyrics or with listening to the lyrics, what is, what is Bitter Earth about, Reiner? I'm gonna actually, I mean, of course the song is super famous, but I do not know if the people, the audience, I was thinking actually um, as an as a audience, are you listening to the lyrics or are you listening more to the rhythm, to the music, to the orchestration and to the dance and you watch the dance. And I think that people not maybe necessarily listen so much to the lyrics. So I, at that moment, again, maybe after, I, I remember, um, I know people afterwards were like, wow, and they looked it up um, and then listened to the lyrics. So I was not concentrating too much on the lyrics. Um, I was just trying to be in one, one, one level. I not necessarily try to give highlights. I tried, I thought the choreography is highlight enough. It's the movement is highlight enough. This is what I learned so much in general um, with MCB, you know, that the body language is more than enough. You don't need to add the sugar and the whipped cream to, to act. So that was something very, I was, I felt alone. I felt very alone, but in the sense like with Emily together, but nothing around, I necessarily paid attention. I mean, it was on tape. So there was no orchestra. You were not like worrying about tempies. So, um, you know, the orchestra pit was dark. The audience is dark. The side stage is dark. So you're really like alone and with Emily and you're just melting together and then separation. So that's what all I was doing, being myself, basically. That's, that was um, very beautifully said, Reiner. Um, Emily, what about you? Um, I, I kind of, what I got out of it was it's the beauty this ballet and this everything about it is the beauty in um, anything dark or heavy and anything light and the beauty in the connection. Um, I learned a lot about um, communication in a very almost silent way. I, I guess I want to say that when in a typical pas de deux, I feel like you have a normal volume of communication like this. If there were to be a volume to your silent communication, it would be about this. I feel like with Bitter Earth, it was, you could hear a pin drop in the sense of communication was so intense that it was almost silent. So it was such a focus. And to watch people doing that on stage, just two human beings to connect like that on stage is, it kind of as in the audience makes you like freeze. And then with this almost heavy music in the background um, creates this beauty that there were no sparkles and there were no special lighting and there were no lifts up throwing up in the air. And, um, but you could be um, just as moved or more um, by the simplicity of um, the beauty of anything, you know, dark or heavy or that was beautifully. That was Emily. Thank you. That was beautifully articulated as well, and and actually it, it, interesting. Very similar um, views with with Reiner about your experiences with Bitter Earth. Uh, my last question for you, other than to thank you both for for joining us, um, or for joining me on this, is to you know these are such extraordinary times where, um, especially for artists, where. Um, the human connection is really how is a how we create um, and b how we live, how we do our work, and um, and an odd way really how we do business, right? So we we depend on others, we depend on people, we depend on that human connection and relationship. Um, how are you doing um, during this time? What are you thinking about? How are you staying? Um, not so much uh, in shape because I think we see dancers all over the world, you know, taking class from their living rooms. But how are you emotionally really thinking about your artistry and, and maybe even using this time to to grow, to develop, to think? Um, Emily, let's start with you. Um, this time has been really interesting. I, I started off um, trying to kind of perfect and fix things in my technique that had been bothering me for a while. Um, so that was plenty of motivation for me. Um, and since then, um, I've also just found myself in communication and in contact with people that I haven't spoken to in years. 
And um, it's just adding a whole layer, a whole different dimension uh, to the ways that I've always been thinking. And it's, it's kind of freshen things up in a different way. Um, and just listening to everybody around the entire world all feeling the same way. You can't just, oh, well, I'm going to go to this country because, you know, I can get away from from this, but you, you can't because everyone's going through it. And uh, again, like Bitter Earth, there's, there's, a, there's a beauty to that, to the harshness that everyone has been facing. Um, and we just to say that we all are trying in our own ways is motivation as well. And if you know, if you think you're sad one day and you're the only one, for sure you're not. <laughs> um, you know, we I hear it from strangers down the street to you know my close friends and my coworkers. Um, so I think it's our it's our own job to keep ourselves motivated, but it's also if we have extra, we can reach out to other people and help them too. My sense is you have a lot of extra, Emily. <laughs> uh, Ryder, what about you? Um, I must admit, in the beginning, I was like, oh, my God, after being six years living in Miami, you know, I've never been. The moment there was a layoff, I was already in the airport. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for the first time, actually, I, I, I had time to be in the apartment. I had time to, to walk around. I had time to go to the beach, really, and, and, and come down and sleep in because usually I'm not taking a lot of vacation. So in the beginning, I was a little bit like, you know, okay, vacation time, taking off a little bit. But of course, um, the more you realize and everyone realized that, you know, it's, it's, it's bad and it's serious and it's going to, you know, take really long and it's not going to be back in a month. Uh, we are not starting back. There was a little, you know, depression. Then a little bit like Emily said, I was like, Reiner, you're not alone in that. Don't, don't complain. There are so much worse cases, you know, people losing family members, people like terrible, terrible. We all know the stories, what we hear in the news and, and what we read in the newspaper. So um, I was just like, you are, you, are, you are healthy, so don't complain. The rest is not important, you know, as long as you have a roof, Yes, of course, you know, we all struggle financially and, and you know, but we're all in the same boat and we want to dance now as the artist or sing as the singer. Um, unfortunately, our our job, our business, the artist is, of course, very hard hit because we can't uh, come back and recover that fast. We can't wear a mask on stage. We can't, you know, we depend on the orchestra, on the audience, on the orchestra and everything. So. It's gonna take a long time. Um, I'm doing a lot of cardio, cardio, like a lot of workout beside dancing, which I really enjoy as well. Well, I just want to say that I'm um, speaking to both of you this morning has made me miss not only the two of you, but has made me miss uh, Miami City Ballet it's, uh, and its dancers and um, and staff in the studios and having all of you back in that building and giving it giving it life. So I I, I pray and I look forward to having all of you back. Um, so we can continue this uh, beautiful growth as, as artists. And I just want to thank you for spending the time with me um, and our friends uh, uh, this afternoon. All right. Lots of love. Be well. Bye-bye. Thank you.